It's all right, I'm composed and calm now. Never mind, managers <laughs> who lose the plot, presenters lose the plot as well as they did the, the first half of that. I'm afraid I did, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> the glass table survived. Uh, welcome back. Uh, Mark Todd, ex uh, Blade, uh, still involved with Sheffield United, very much involved. Chris Holt of the Sheffield Star uh, with us to talk about both the Blades and the Owls. James Craig here as well. We were discussing in the first part about how Chris Wilder named that same team from the Hillsborough mm. Derby for the Wolves game, was rewarded with another great performance. Just thinking about it, I know you were there. Um, it would have been very unfair had he left anybody out, though, as well. If he'd have made just one or two changes, those one or two players would have been quite aggrieved, wouldn't they? You know, I think why you, me? You, you stay in and form, don't you? That's, that's how you yeah. gain the yeah. players' confidence. Um, that week in, week out, if I'm producing Gaffer, I'm staying, yeah. I should be staying in. Yeah. Um, but he has, you know, he can tweak it with, with Bash coming into midfield and Dust dropping out. You know how we how we approach this game this weekend may be slightly different. We don't know. I think and then he did that again last night, didn't he? With as you mentioned about the, you know, the Duffy bringing thing. Duffy on yeah, yeah. whenever you whenever yeah. you're you're already in front, and he did it again last night, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Whenever the same were one now up. yeah. Defender off right. He went to four four two. Went four four two. It's just and just give them a bit because they were they are they can be a wee bit slick, can't yeah. they? So we just yeah. it's, it's brilliant, Chris, at trying to wrestle back the initiative. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the prime example was Sunday, so it's yeah. hard back at it. Yeah. Where it's gone to 2-2. Two, two. But you'd not lost the initiative when he made that change. Leading 2-1, but there was big Wednesday pressure. I mean, there was big pressure. Wednesday pressure. They were coming I in suppose. waves, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. managers would have battened down the hatches and said, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. you know, we'll take a striker off and we'll pack yeah. midfield. And I think he don't do that. Presents the different challenge, doesn't he? It's yeah. about being progressive and, and they said he didn't want to take yeah, a backward yeah. step and he, and he didn't. No. I'd say going back to that point about sort of, you know, keeping that same team, not leaving people out. I think if you did bring, say, a Freeman back in into the side, you know, instead of Baldock on the right, just for whatever, you know, not injury. I think that Chris Wilder has shown that the players who are left on the sidelines are raring to go. They're not sort yes. of thinking, oh, they haven't got the face on. And that was the same with Leon Clark last season. Yes. You know, he, he had that sort of long stretch out, injury, not, maybe not. Hansen then came in, had to win his place back. And then when he did came in, he was firing on all cylinders, ready yeah. to, you know, fight for the shirt. If you do it, you'll keep the shirt, won't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's also, yeah. it's about managing the group, not yeah. just the 11. I think because, that's the thing so good And that. we talked about, you know, making everybody accountable, having an atmosphere, an environment, a culture whereby if you're in, you stay in, if you're producing, and clearly last year was we were, and this year we've continued that mould. But I think treating them like adults and, and, and giving the right message and playing them in the right, in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, position they want yeah. to play, round that's crucial, isn't it? Like we talked yeah. about round, round pegs and round holes, absolutely vital. What about Billy Sharp? Now, Billy Sharp, through no fault of his own, lost his place because he was injured. He's what? Still the top scorer with? Yeah. Was it? Is it four four goals? Yeah. Yeah. Is he going to get? He, he might be fit now. Uh, he's on the bench anyway. Is he going to get his place back? He's not at the moment, is he? Perhaps not. What a great what, what a great problem that? to have for, yeah. for Tufts. But young Brooks, he's come and taken his uh, taken that uh, yeah. um, chance yeah. really well, and then rewarded today with a, a Wales call up. I think to be fair, well, that yeah. exactly, absolutely. Fantastic. Fantastic. I think so. I think that. To be fair as well to Billy Sharp, having spoke to him at the sort of back end of last season when he came yeah. in here, it was quite apparent, I think, then, that he probably thought, well, actually, I'm going to be a bit part player anyway. So I think that he, again, will sort of just acknowledge that he might have to win his place back and it's not, he's not a first name on the he, team. He won't accept it lightly, I don't think. He won't, however. No, he won't. He but knows yeah, he won't that the captain's armband is on and off the pitch. We talked yeah. about Leuven's galvan galvanising or contributing to the, to the position at the moment. Same with Billy. All right, slightly yeah. different approaches because of the because of the, the situation, two different situations. But those senior pros are absolutely vital for either maintaining the, the status quo or if it, in, in adversity, yeah. you know, getting the group together and adding yeah. that experience and knowledge um, to get them out of that. Yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. You use the word Brooks, and we've got to come to that word. And congratulations to him on his Welsh cap. I mean, Fantastic. that's a no-brainer, really, yeah. being in the senior Wales squad after what he's doing. Yeah. Just for you. How good is this kid? You know, how far can he go, Mark? Can well, he? we're going to play it down because we want to keep him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, he's not that good. Is he? <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, we've all seen him. Everybody has their opinion. The boy is an absolute talent. He's uh, reminds me of young Peter Barnes. You know, I used to watch at Old Trafford. He glides and he's silky, um, and he'll get better and better the more games he has. But he's no fear. That's the no, brilliant thing at the moment. He's absolutely no fear. First two minutes at Hillsborough. Brilliant. 
takes off on a run, <laughs> wins you a go. free kick. Yeah. Good. Absolutely brilliant. No fear, young, you know, just go and express yourself. And that's obviously um, Chris's message to him as well. Um, just go and play. I'm Do thinking, your thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking the best young talent in Sheffield football since since who? I'm just trying to trying to think. I'd say the best debut I've seen at Bramall Lane was probably Kyle Walker and Norton. Yes. They were the two best debuts that you could possibly have Absolutely wish to see. Absolutely agree with you. Um, I think Michael Tong had a brilliant debut in a Sheffield derby as well, one of his first games. Yeah. But this this kid's going to go further oh. than, than, yeah. than Michael Tong. Yeah. I mean, well, I we so. can't say about Carl Walker because he's... <laughs> he's doing all right. He's doing all right. Well, yeah. But, uh, which brings us on to, you know, there's going to be serious offers in, in January, but another no-brainer, surely. You might get 15 million. Another no-brainer, surely, is to say, no, if he's worth 15 million now, it's going to be worth 20 in the summer and we might be in the Premier League then. Do you know, the, uh, and you that's think? the approach. I don't think the expectation was perhaps consolidation, so you probably had a consolidatory budget. Now with the position we're in, the confidence is growing. Is there a a, a promotion budget yeah, come January, yeah, yeah. or a, diff a different level of investment? Yeah. Because these opportunities don't come around. No. So I know Chris will want to put the foot down and invest in yeah. the squad and, and, and better the squad yeah. for all eventualities that uh, will crop up throughout the season and bolster the squad. But I can I know he's wanting. And TC said it, didn't he? Yeah. He said, it was know, second. Yeah. He said yeah. runners up. It doesn't up. look so daft, uh, does it? Uh, it doesn't. doesn't there was a polite uh, pause from me. And if it had been anybody else, I'd have yeah. gone, oh, yeah. oh, oh. See, but all he that said knowledge. It, yeah. He said it dead pat. Yeah, yeah. Runners yeah. up. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, January, you can't pick and choose, as Smart says, when you get promoted. If the opportunity's there, you might say, oh, it's a bit early. No, you can't refuse it. Got to go for it, haven't you? Yeah. Well, it, it brings up another challenge, and now that I've seen what has happened so far, I've no reason to believe that you'd fail in this one. Because at the end of last season, I thought to myself, and I spoke to others, we may have, may have been, even spoke to you about this, where he's gone up a level, Chris Wilder's gone up a level, he needs yeah. to bring his players up a level as well, yes. and, the, and the type of player that he's bringing in the club has to go up a level. He's done that, clearly, because everybody's... Without spending game. much. Yeah, without yeah. spending much. Yeah. And he's clearly done that. And so now you're thinking, right, well, what if they're there or thereabouts in January and yeah. money does come in? Does he go, right, well, I'll bring it up a level again? Or, the, or does he think to himself, we well, actually, sure, this yeah. has worked so it, far. Is it going to affect that unity and spirit? Exactly. And does, that so does, he, does he find someone who's just, just a little yeah. bit better than... than than who he brought in from League One before, or maybe somebody a bit further down yeah. the championship, or does he go all out and go around and go to bring a big name in here? A lot of these things, all, all in the mix, however... Conundrums. <laughs> like like yeah. I say, the, there's nothing he's done so far to make me think that he won't get it right. He gets we, everything right. We were saying, I mean, I that, you know, if you disagree with this, if you, you know, think I'm wrong, if he brought someone in on 25 grand a week, and you know we sort of know what goes on a little bit with in terms of how he deals with his transfers. If he brings someone on twenty grand a week, they're going to come in. The other players might be a bit disgruntled. But at some no. point, he's going to have to yeah, only do that. If it's somebody they respect, like Phil Jagielka, yeah. as a for instance, I don't think any player is going to go. Oh, look what he's. Well, how come he's on that? They're not because of the respect. But the best it's way for be him the to respect. bring that big wage is do it from within, rather than bringing someone in and chucking twenty grand a week in reward the players that you've already goal, got yeah, with the contract. Yeah, that's approach. a good point. It is a good approach. Rather than do it. And, and, and you know, I'm sure that he's Because the dynamic control, of the group is, is, is successful. It's the reason why we've been so successful and we haven't been able to mm. maintain that momentum um, because everybody feels that they can contribute, they can, they, you know, and, and there's no egos in there. And I was, yeah. that's probably that's that old school bit where there's no egos, discipli discipline is, yeah. is to the fore, the group's bigger than the, than the, the one individual. Right. So, yes, but I think there's, I think there's, there's, there's probably his is wish list may have changed from the yeah, start of the yeah, season. Yeah. And obviously that could come at a, a greater cost. And it's whether he thinks that the, it, that's worth it, it's worth the risk. Maybe to the, I'm going to say, upset the, the, yeah. the dynamism within the group. But like I say, afford it's all about affordability right. as well. Still to come, a story of a fountain and a pair of brand new green trainers. <laughs> I've got to hear it from him. Uh, and more about Sheffield Wednesday and that huge game uh, against Leeds at the weekend after we heard from James.
right across the world of sport. Absolutely, it's hard. 2-4 get to that game on Sunday, isn't it? Sorry, I had to get that one in. Uh, Wolves were the visitors to Bramall Lane last <laughs> night, as we've already touched on, having spent over £30 million pounds in this summer. They probably left Bramall Lane scratching their heads, didn't they? Um, after a 2-0 defeat, blazing out to second. I'm sure you already know this if you are uh, from a red and white persuasion. Away at Knott's Forest on Saturday, um, as we've already touched on, David Brooks has been called up to the senior Wales squad for their next two World Cup qualifiers as well. Great news for him, that. Just a bit gutted it's not, he's not chose the three Lions, but, you know. Yeah, I think go. England have just missed a trick there, haven't they? There's Big so many time, good players, isn't there? Especially how, that age. Have they not managed to pull him well, in? Well, somebody, I think somebody's tweeted out today, would he get in that England senior squad? No, not the senior not, squad, not right. but he... But, so, he so the Wales sorry. bit, sorry. He's, he, he's now yeah. amongst that senior group, He's some yeah. fantastic players in there, you know, established internationals, a successful group, Gareth Bale, and Ramsey, etc., cetera, mm. etc. Cetera. Some, re some really great sport. players there. Some yeah. great players. Well, he can he can learn and feed off. Yeah. And uh, Gareth Bale. I mean, it's a big attraction, isn't it? You know, if you yeah. put yourself in that situation. But his think. progression, his, his, his progression in his I, career, that I, is seen as a progressive move. I heard somebody compare him to, to Bale. I've got a feeling it was even TC again <laughs> in one of the hospitality lounges comparing him right. to again right. not sounding to a young Bale. Yeah. You know. I wish well. his mum was from Belfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. Usually I'm sure we can dig some papers. <laughs> yeah, you'll be able Usually to that can be arranged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't absolutely. It? You, you, you lot have a all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah yes, you certainly. Have. Oh, George Hurst has got a, in in an England squad. I read that story, but I saw a headline on it. He, despite not really. Yeah. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't played. played any football apart from no. England, so it's a bit. Um, I guess what we can take from that is that. He's clearly rated by the England setup, yeah. and they're yeah. more than willing to keep him involved because he, he probably thought to himself, you know, am I going to drop out of this squad here because yeah. I haven't been playing? But fair play to the to the to the coaching setup. You just hope somebody blinks because, and I, uh, it's no good for anybody. No, it's no good for anybody. But I can't see anybody blinking at the moment. No. It's a blinking shame. <laughs> It really is. Absolutely. Yeah, I think but, uh, when everything's yeah. going against you, it seems like it is going against you. And that was certainly the case for the Owls last night. Um, they lost at Birmingham last night. They had a clear goal ruled out, apparently. Um, yeah. I think the club, yeah, I think the club have, have tweeted it or put it out there. I, th I thought they were going to, I think. So right. I thought I'd be to have a look at that. But wow. I'm well. sure it was a perfectly good goal. Well, their next game, big test, is against Leeds. Uh, sorry, yeah, against Leeds on Sunday. It's on the telly as well if you can't get to that game. Uh, Sheffield FC ladies, they got their Women's Super League campaign underway on the wrong end of a defeat by Oxford United in their opener. Uh, they've got the first game away at the, uh, sorry, against um, uh, the London Bees, who are a sort of a combination of a few teams from London, mainly Barnet Brent FC. Brentford. Brentford, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, they play at the Hive, the home of Barnet FC. Uh, oh, that's nice. at the Coaching Horses <laughs> yeah. Ground um, in Dronfield. So if you do fancy, it's a great standard of football. Alan yeah. can testify. Alan has been to watch them. Yeah, um, that's much. on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, the men's side, though, they've lost five in a row. Last night's 3-0 loss to Leak Town meant the end for Mark Hume um, as their manager. They'll look to appoint a new boss before they travel to Romulus on Saturday. Mm. We, we interview the manager of Sheffield every season, and he's the one that's never been in, isn't he? Yeah, I know. We usually get the, the manager gone. in, and he's gone before he's even come in the studio. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's what's the problem. Yeah, I know. Should maybe have come in, it'd have been all right. So yeah. I advise the next boss, get yourself in here. Um, <laughs> Very much. So Billy Sharp always comes in here when he's on a lean run, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he goes does, on yeah. scoring streets. So maybe he needs there. to come in now. Yeah, he might yeah. get back in the team. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hallam yeah. FC, they're out the FA Vars. They lost to Rossington, Maine on Tuesday. They'll want to rectify their league, co uh, le their league form as well. Um, they're currently in the bottom of five. They play against Winterton Rangers on Saturday. Um, a double header for the Steelers. As, um, as always, uh, Coventry Blaze are the opponents yeah. uh, both Saturday and Sunday but at home at the arena on Saturday 7.30 tip off if you want to go and soak up uh, some of that incredible atmosphere yeah. and a chance for some silverware for the Sheffield Eagles as well admittedly a consolation silverware they play against Toulouse in the final of the Super 8 which is for the teams who just missed out on the top four good chance though for a financial gain and b sort of trying to regroup and regalvanize that squad for next season as well and finally it's the British Masters Golf this week at close house near Newcastle so if you've got a clear weekend and you fancy going and watching some top quality golf Matt Fitzpatrick and Danny Willett are both in action uh, Matt Fitz open with a bogey 366 for four under and Danny Willett slightly better for him as well after such a bad run of form for probably the best part of a year now he's on one under par
All right, thank you very much. No worries at all. Yeah, it's great. Uh, next week, just to remind us, I often forget to who's <laughs> coming in the following week. Uh, we've, we've got a quite interesting show for our Owls fans, because obviously we've ac accented more on the Blades this week with Mark Todd. Couldn't keep him out, you know. It was like, it was no hardship at all to get a, a guest in. <laughs> it was the quickest reply ever, wasn't it? <laughs> I cracked it. I don't, I don't, I don't, 30, 30 yeah. seconds after texting him, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> straight yeah. Um, Next week, uh, there's a book, a new book, out on a, a, a legend going way back to the uh, 19th century called Fred Spikesley you know and I've, I'm reading that book at the moment and he's bringing this incredible footballer to life uh, we, he's not in the studio himself next <laughs> week sadly but one of the authors is and I, I was thinking who can we get a, a slightly more modern day and who should be next to him on the Sheffield Wednesday dream scene picture than the Fantastic. hero of the Boxing Day Massacre in 1979, Terry Curran. So Terry's coming in next week, and we're going to talk about that book as well. Terry's always great value yeah. as well, in proper he maverick, is. like you say, you know. Yeah. So. And Fred Spikesley yeah, yeah. comes across as a maverick as well in the book. You know, he's Mother a gambler, yeah, exactly. a bit of a loser, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, as footballers should be, I suppose should you be. could, could that's, say. That's drinking and gambling, no, yeah. no. Are you going to, you going to Hillsborough Sunday? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, me too, me too. Leeds United is a tough test at any time. Always, it? always is. It always is. You know, um, and especially so because they lo they lost in midweek, didn't they? So they yes, they did. Yeah, and after just, after you know such a great start to the season, lost so they've the lost. And, oh, yeah, but yeah, and and the thing about that one is nobody's gonna nobody at Leeds is gonna think to themselves they're not gonna be too mm -hmm. downhearted there because. It's Cardiff, yes. and Cardiff had a really good start themselves. And Warnock. So, um, <laughs> yeah, keeps doing it. and, really and so they're going to come, <laughs> should still be full of confidence despite that mm. defeat, and probably hoping to pr prove a point to themselves and to other people that they're still, you know, a big force to be reckoned with this season yeah. after the start of the final, So The shackles have come off this season under this manager, Christiansen, compared to the way Gary Monk was playing. They're much more free-flowing. Well, They'll come and attack, I think. I, I must um, admit, uh, I know the old Sheffield-Leeds rivalry it exists, but I don't like to give them too much credit. But <laughs> to be fair to them, I, I thought last year was their big chance because they came out of nowhere yeah. and they stuck by it until those last few weeks where they completely lost it. Yeah. And I didn't imagine that they would be able to to carry that off and go again with a new manager having lost you know a couple of key players as well and they've done it so you know fair play to them how was carlos's approach to, to this critical game which could be critical for him as you know the, 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 the direction of the club season is he going to look to changes he's been incredibly loyal to these players he's been heavily criticized for protecting them and presumably telling them i don't want you saying anything yeah. about the derby i don't know whether that was the right thing to do or no. not but the players owe him for it um, um, I, I don't think he make wholesale changes. I, he, he might tweak it. He might yeah. bring a couple in, just to maybe freshen things up a bit. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Glenn Leuven's played. Yeah. Um, I think that this week we will see the uber cautious Carvalhal that we saw a lot of last season. Do you? Yeah. I, th well, I think he will just make sure that they don't lose this week. Do you? Well, I, I think that's the worst thing he could do. Well, I think so too. I would, I would much rather him go. And I don't think uh, he'll go. go down, go down fighting. Yeah, I don't think he'll go that way personally. I no, think I'd, he'd, he'd rather go down all guns I, blazing. I, I, I think he will be very cautious. Mm -hmm. I thought he would be more cautious on Wednesday night than he was. So, credit to him for that. I just thought with the way that Wednesday were opened up so we, so easily. Yeah. On on Sunday but and and us it, constantly it, asking them to play this. It, the crowd's on the edge. If they make a cautious, and slow, typical start to, to that game, that you know that's going to set could, the wrong atmosphere. Yeah, it, it for Wednesday to produce this performance. But what he'll, he'll say is, well, you know, we're playing against a good team here. We don't want to, because yeah. he'll he'll think to himself, well, the last time we did come out and with a big atmosphere, we were two 0 down after 15 minutes. Yeah. But so I think it might just be that bit, a little bit more cautious, certainly in the first half, and see how things go. Like you say, Leuven's could be big. Um, I, th I think his experience has been missed. It's, I said last week that from a defensive point of view up until last week, he hadn't really been missed. Right. But from the point of view of just his experience and, and that level-headedness that he has and just, yeah. just ability just to 
steady the ship. But we, I think that was probably missed last week, and I think I think he'll probably come back in. There was a change in goal, of course, midweek, uh, yeah. attributed to an injury to Kieran Westwood. Although I felt mm. that it wasn't so far off a big call being made anyway. Well, he Westwood's wasn't been outstanding, but this season has no, he wasn't. He wasn't playing was. well, yeah. and and he, I certainly thought that he played quite poorly actually against United. Um, but I, th this is sort of indicative of the, the secrecy that surrounds Sheffield Wednesday at times. If, if Carlos had just come out and said to us, yeah. Kieran West was cracked a rib, that's why he didn't play very well on Sunday. But I would have no, I'd criticise Kieran West quite, yes. quite, quite, quite in quite a big way on Sunday after the game. And I, I know where I would have, would have done that had I known that he was playing with cracked ribs. Yeah. You know, sometimes this is, you just need there to be a wee bit more openness and, and explain things a wee bit better, and then, then you might not get so much criticism. Uh, Sheffield United are at Nottingham Forest. Mm. Now, goodness me, you couldn't possibly have anticipated when the season started looking at that thinking, oh, they'll win that. No. Because yeah, that's what a lot of players <laughs> oh, yeah. fans will do. Oh, Nottingham Forest away. Oh, yeah, we're going to win that. Confidence high. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Absolutely. Momentum's there. The players are, are buoyant. Club's buoyant. Got to bring back. Got to bring back at the Liam. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Two thousand yeah. tickets. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's commercially, yes, it's uh, so everybody's happy. And what, what uh, would you do? What would you do if you were Chris Wilder Saturday? What would you do? Keep it the same? What would yeah. you? Would you? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why change? Why change? It? You can't change the approach because would you do it in business? If you no. were earning money successfully, would you change the approach? No. 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 They could be top of the table comes Saturday night. And my smile's just got a wee bit bigger there as well. <laughs> You're trying <laughs> to contain it, aren't they? <laughs> no, <stop it. laughs> I know, I know. But it's, but it's deserved. Yeah, because yeah, the performances yeah, are there. You know, it's exactly. It's and not that, that's it's deserved. The, uh, we were talking earlier about the international break and how that, you know, the, the things that sort of stuff might sort of hang around and a bit negatively yeah. might hang around. They'll have two weeks where they're, they're not playing with their top of the league. Could yeah. be. You know, the, yeah. the, the table's not going to change for those two weeks because no. nobody's playing. No. It's just Put down. Just keep going. Absolutely. Enjoy it. Take it up the tide. And, you know, plenty of clubs of United size have done that double bounce. I'm not going to say they, don't, they will, but they're going to be in with a, have an opportunity to do it. The yeah. thing that's United impressed me most today. about them, I must, I must admit, is that on each occasion we've lost this season, mm. they've won the next one. Yes. And that, that's been crucial. Should have another point against Millsborough. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that was the unfortunate. <laughs> Those were the back-to-back -back defeats, weren't they? Because it was really unlucky at Middlesbrough, one 0 and then losing at Cardiff. But you but say that they missed the Wolves missed a penalty last yeah. night. But if you look at the quality of the opposition out. up to now, yeah. Derby, Norwich, Middlesbrough, Sheffield Wednesday, Wolves, Wolves. Ex, ex Premier League, in around the playoffs, it's a real test. Brentford was a test as well. They were excellent. I thought the yeah, yeah. yeah. good football inside. So we've matched. We've, we've sort of coped with that, and, and we're kicking on again. So yeah, yeah, big smiles. Big smiles, absolutely, and uh, it's to be enjoyed. And the football <coughs> rivalry goes on, and I hope that Sheffield Wednesday will start to catch up with the Blades, and and that the two of them are going neck and neck, you know, for it in the in the top six as the season progresses. But a lot will depend on the next week or two, and possibly even the the next match. As might to, see each uh, other at Wembley. Might see, no, don't no. talk about that. There's we'll a That's going to be a nightmare There's for you with all those specials and pull-outs <coughs> and stuff like that. That's all right. I'll be more than yeah. happy with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Mark Todd, thanks very much indeed. Really very enjoyed welcome, it. Man. It was uh, so good of you to come in. I had to really persuade you and really <laughs> uh, cajole you to get you in, yeah. but I'm glad you made the effort. Yeah. My Chris Holt as ever and James Gregg, thanks very much. Cheers, a bit of a Sheffield Wednesday uh, special on the show next week. This is repeated at 11. It's on my YouTube channel tonight. Thanks a lot. See you next week.